we're upgrading a Dragonlord Dromoka deck for our patron, Jackarox. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us, with Amber, the Nitpicking Nerds. She's finally here. We're here to talk to you about our Patreon, which you can join for money, and then the money goes to the channel and helps make the channel better, but you love us, so it really makes your life better, too, and it's just a win-win everywhere. Did you know, Beezy, that actually, to get a tune-up, you have to be Ooh. in one of the tiers of our Patreon, so go join that tier and get your own tune-up where we can fix your deck. All of our decks are on Moxville.com, who sponsors this channel, and yeah, I'm doing things out of order today, but who cares? Guess the time code for where the ad will be. You're wrong. Sorry. If you got it right, you cheated. That's how it pretty much works every single time. TCG Player is a way to support this channel. Go to our link in the description below. As long as you start with that link, you use the site the same as you would any other day. Get the cards at the same price, but the nitpicking nerds get a kickback. Yes, and happy, happy birthday. birthday. Everybody's birthday is today. Also, you know what? We'll just throw it out to YouTube. Quick question. You know, Amber, she's here. She's been rubbing her face a lot, rubbing her nose. It's kind of rubbing some of the skin off, I think. She's getting a little rash or something. What can I put on that? Let me know. All right. Sounds good. All <laughs> Let right. me know. So this is Commander Two Notes, where we take your user-submitted decks and other your restrictions, turn them into a masterpiece. Now, today was a little bit different. Uh, a deck was sent in with 113 cards. So that's all. It's too many. It's too many. Obviously, 100-card uh, decks are at the limit for Commander. We need to get down that. And the deck was $800. And he wanted to get this deck down to 500 because this is not a deck he has put together. It is just an idea that he had put online. And I think I did a pretty good job with that. Only restriction we had was to make the deck life gain and kind of keep the big fun dragons in, keep the core fun part of the deck together. Yeah, exactly. That's what the deck wanted to do. He specifically told me, I want to play big fun dragons. That's the idea. So let's do that. First thing we got to do is we got to get this deck down to 100 cards before we start switching cards out. And we also know that we need to cut $300 off the deck at some point. So these are going to be some expensive cards that just kind of have to get cut. Not because they're bad, not because they don't synergize, but because we have $500 to spend. Yes, and I want to be super clear. I fought so hard to get this deck to keep in the Great Hands because it does have life gain synergy. I fought so hard, and I got it in. Ooh. So first cut that was for price, Evanston Angel Hope, big, fun, splashy card. Overall, not the biggest and best thing you can be doing, Commander, but very fun. But the card's like 60 bucks, so that's an easy cut when you have to be on a budget. It's so not worth the price. Like The card's fine, but it's not worth $60. Next is Craterhoof Behemoth. This one is mostly a budget cut where it's just $30, I can get off the budget, and I added a life gain version of uh, Craterhoof Behemoth, so that just makes the deck more synergistic and fun. Minus boring power plus flavor. Minus power plus synergy. Yeah, I noticed a little bit of like a hate bears theme in this deck. So Linvala Keeper of the Silence is the first cut in that like category. This one is like the most expensive. So the other ones didn't really make it. So obviously this one's getting out. Yeah, it's just it's too expensive. This card is more, I think, of a high power card than a fun casual card. Also cut Elishorn. This is another one that well, this was purely budget. This has nothing to do with strength of the card. The card just doesn't fit with our strategy. We're not super goal wide. So if we need to save $25, this is a great card to cut. Yeah, Sylvan Library, very much, uh, you know, throw it in for the fun of it because it's a decent card by itself, and it is good with life gain. It's just never going to be in any deck with almost any budget because yeah. it's so expensive. Yeah, and worth mentioning right now, because this is the first enchantment we cut, this had a sub-theme of Enchantress that wasn't quite enough in. It, the deck either had to go really in on it or really away from it, and it was one of those things, like we mentioned in our videos before, Maybe you want one sub-theme. This deck had other sub-themes. We're not going to go with the Enchantress one. I thought it was too far out white. Yeah, like right. we, have, we have the theme of life gain, and then we're already trying to do sub-themes of like hate bears and enchantments, and we don't want to do either of those, as, yeah. as it turns out. Yeah, and this deck also has dragons as a sub-theme. Right, it's like we, we got to let's keep the dragons in, but we got to take the rest out. Yeah, if we're gonna, that's our one sub-theme. Land tax was also cut. We're not even that big of fans of this card, especially in a green deck. Not in green. Very, very low on it is in a green deck. And I just, we need to save money. This card's expensive. I will just say it's, I think it's bad. That's fair. I think you just not, shouldn't play it in green decks. Uh, Growing Whites of Hitlamok. Expensive. Fine. We're not going the widest to take the full max advantage of it. But also, we can't spend that kind of money. Same with Smothering Tithe. I mean, like Teferi's Protection. Do we have to say that these are the best cards ever and they're super expensive? Yeah, exactly. Smothering Tithe, Teferi's Protection, uh, there's exactly the same reason just it's budget purely budget thalia is another hate bear that we just got away from she's fine but she's seven dollars so we got her out of the deck that card is seven dollars yep what, what happened it's just a decent card people Jeez, like i it. was thinking like oh man this one's only like 60 cents why is it on here no it's seven dollars okay Mar murray's wake another card over ten dollars didn't really fit the theme 
if we it, like you know a lot of these are enchantments. We're off the enchantress thing. Yeah, so we cut Marari's week in a similar vein. Moxfield.com is probably the best way you can organize your decks and sort decks online. If you've got a deck that's 113 cards, and you're not sure how to get it down to 100. You gotta go to Moxfield. You can sort it all. You can view it all easily. There's a ton of shortcuts for adding and cutting cards and saving mana bases as the default for a certain color combination. When you search to add cards, it only shows you the cards that can go in your commander deck. You don't need to see all the temples when you search Temple of. Yes, the whole time I was working on this deck, I was doing it on Moxfield. It was sent to me via a Moxfield link. I took it, I duplicated the deck, which is something you can do, and once you duplicate the deck, you're in full control of what you want to do with it. I simply was just clicking the cut button, getting cards out of the deck, and making this into an awesome functional deck that I personally would play myself. Yes, because of the amazing UI, we got to cut Heroic Intervention, a card I think is pretty meh. Never, I don't think it was ever a deck that like is screaming for this card. It's kind of like, if you feel like you are kind of want to be defensive, this is a card for you. We're not going to play it. I feel like, uh, honestly, Heroic Intervention is a card that, if I'm in white, I'll never touch. Uh, I kind of went away from all these effects as this deck does kind of, it does get on board, but we're not scared of board wipes. That's not what this deck is about. It's not all about playing everything out and having, and being super exposed. We don't need Heroic Intervention. We'd want Teferi's Protection if we were on budget, but we're not, it's not within our budget. And Toski, which has gone up, I think it's seven or eight dollars. Also, just not making the card. Also, we're not a go wide deck. That card is more of like, if you have small evasive threats that can get through. Now we get to go make some one for one changes and the first ones, you notice, the ones that gotta go right away, Celestia Signet's getting cut, because we're not playing Signets in the green decks, and we're putting in Accomplished Alchemist, bonus for the life gain sub theme, strengthen that, and it's more functional. Yeah, uh, Accomplished Alchemist is really, really cool. I mean, it's on theme, it's doing what we want, and it can really tap for mana. I mean, Dramoko alone, you can make five. Yeah, exactly. On the turns where you get to go off, you get to actually go off. If you ever tap with this in Dramoko, like you said, that's five guaranteed. But you... Now you can just take the chance because Jamoka means no one's casting anything. They can't. They can't just, stop you. Just put in all your mana into some life gain spell so that you can gain life and then tap this for 100 mana. Yeah, and don't worry. We know it's a two drop mana ramp for a four drop. We'll get there. We also cut Arcane Signet for Sky Shroud Claim, which is just better and like, this is, Sky Shroud Claim is fantastic. We're going to play it in every green deck and we're never going to play Arcane Signet. Yeah, exactly. We're in green decks. We have better ramp like Sky Shroud Claim. Very good. Cultivate Kodama's Reach. This deck is very high on Mana Dorks. Cultivate and Kodama's Reach are spells I won't go to if I'm playing Mana Dorks. They're too far down once you start using the Mana Dorks. So what isn't? Uh, what comes in in their place is Nature's Lore and Three Visits. Same card. They both are two mana. Go get a forest out of your deck. Onto the battlefield. Untapped. Meaning these cost essentially one mana. Yeah, there's your two mana ramp to replace those signets. Get them out of here. We also got Rampant Growth. And we didn't really put in a ramp spot, a ramp a spell in place of it, but we did add camaraderie, which is not so much an anthem as it is like a, a schematic revelation, draw a bunch of cards card. Yeah, this deck was really heavy on ramp, but it was not heavily in card draw. So, mm -hmm. so we even had, though we're not like crazy we, go wide, we still want a little bit of oof. This deck has a 34 plus creature count, so it's it's a high creature count. Meaning we will have creatures on the battlefield. And we needed card draw. Um, and I was looking all around trying to find the best things to fit. This does gain life, which is synergistic to our deck. This deck already has all the draw when you gain life cards. Those are already in this deck. So we needed something else. We'll go with the wide theme. Yep. Sword of the Animus. Another kind of, this is like a Voltron kind of. It wants expendable tokens or it wants a creature that can always get through. We're going to just put Mangara the Diplomat instead. And we're going to draw some cards because yes. we need that. Yeah. Sword of the Animus doesn't go in green decks usually. And Mangara is just really, really good. And it has lifelink Bonus. fitting right on theme with our deck. Karameetra, Guard of the Harvest. I love this card. It's an awesome card. It really is cool, but it's a slow setup card for late in the game. I like this as the commander. I don't like it in the 99 very often. I added a card that I thought was perfect for this deck because we want all the modes. It is Primal Command. We can be, we can get we can use it as removal to get rid of a non-creature permanent. We can shuffle someone's graveyard into the library, some graveyard hate, gain seven life, or in two dropper creature. All things this deck wants to do. Yes, putting something on top is not removal, but putting it on top and then shuffling their graveyard in is removal. It is. I mean, putting it on top when it costs a solid chunk of mana is is still removal. It's nice. It's like it gets it off the field for a little bit. Great temp. You can choose to have this be a slow removal spell if you need to. Also. You're getting Worldly Tutor. Well, not Worldly Tutor. You're getting Tutor and uh, Gain 7. Speaking of the Enchantress theme, Enchantress Presence is out. In comes Celestine, the Living Saint. This card is really good. It gets card advantage, so it kind of, you know, does the card drawing thing, but it gains life and has lifelink. Yeah, bolstering the life gain theme. That's kind of a pun. Because the first Dramoka bolsters. And then we're just getting rid of this whole Enchantress sub theme. We got Zendikar Resurgent getting cut also. Again, it's kind of like a whatever card. If you want to go super big, you can play it. I don't 
think this is one of those decks that wants to go super big, we're going to play Soul Warden because if any deck wants to gain life, this is like the first card you add. Yes, we added all three of the versions of this. We added Soul Warden, Soul's Attendant, which is the literal exact same card except for the name has changed, and Essence Warden, which is color shifted green version from... Whatever the one with the, chaos. the two ovals. Yeah, the two oval-shaped ones. Yeah, we caught Sithis Harvest Hand for Souls Attendant. That's a, just, a, it's another Enchantress Presence. Get him out of here. Two, unfocused, not a bad card, but we don't need it. And Rish Card's Expertise, how big are we going? Not very big. Like, at least Camaraderie, how many cards do you need? You need five to feel pretty okay? I mean, we don't need, you don't need 15, but we don't have a 15 drop to draw five, ten, cards with Rishkar's Expertise. The ceiling on Rishkar's Expertise is like six in this deck, whereas the ceiling with something like Camaraderie is, we, we're hoping to get five. You know, that's like what we're hoping to get. But the ceiling is like nine, ten. This deck can easily go that wide. We're also going to cut Garrick's Uprising. It's a nice card draw spell, but we're going to put instead Lathiel the Bounteous Dawn. This is pure life gain flavor, baby. I mean, we're not going to, we're not hurting for card draw anymore after this deck is done being edited, so we don't need Garrick's Uprising as much. Yeah, also, this card's really good. Uh, I mentioned, uh, I was talking to Jack Rocks while I was working on this, I'm like, if you're looking for a commander that's actually much more focused on life gain, this card is strong. It like adds, if you gain seven life, it's like, boom, three counters, three counters, one counter. It's This card really is good. Like I think it's just a, one of the strongest life gain commanders, especially in green-white. I think I always discount Lathiel because it was like one of the worst commanders in that format for draft. Absolutely. Commander really Legends, was. it did nothing because there was no life gain support. Yeah, but well, when you build a deck, BZ, you get to put in life gain support. You get to put support. any cards you want. It also triggers another people's upkeep. So Soul Warden, uh, Essence Warden, and Souls Attendant all are going to be getting you counters for every single creature that enters the battle. That card is good. Quick shout out to our ranking all precons video of 2022 where we noted one of the biggest problems with the precons of last year was that they always used the wrong Ajani. This deck, we're going to cut a Johnny Mentor of Heroes, which can draw creatures and put counters on creatures and will never, ever gain you 100 life, which I, I think I'd rather draw a card at that one instead. It's, it's like the worst ultimate ever. We're going to put in a Johnny Strength of the Pride, the correct Johnny, which zeroes and basically turns himself into a sorcery that plague wins everything. Yeah, it does that. Or on the other side, it's also gaining life with its plus and making threats with its little... Uh, a Johnny's Pride Mate it, minus. It literally makes a Johnny's Pride Mate. It's just a great card for a life gain death. Yeah, classic wrong a Johnny scenario. Wrong a Johnny. Get in the... A Johnny Strength of the Pride is the one you were thinking of. I think you might have... You know what? You typed in the Johnny and you clicked the wrong one. I'll yeah, give you... It uh, happens. Benefit of the doubt. Uh, Yasharn, get out of here, pig. I... It's I, a hate bear card. It's a hate bear card. I don't really like the pig that much anyway. We added in Nykthos Paragon. Overrun. This card makes your board big. If you hit with Tremoka, your whole team gets five counters. That's a lot. You do have to untap with them, but you can also, like, you play Tremoka, then you can uh, uh, pass the turn. You're going to make it back to your turn if you do. They can't do anything, so you can, like, play Nick those Paragon and gain a bunch of life at once. Another Hate Bear type card, Sagarder Host of Herons. This card is not really good in many lists. I don't know where you play this card other than as the commander. Add it in. That Crater Hoof I, I mentioned before. It's Blossoming Bog Beast. When it attacks, you gain two life, and then all your creatures get plus X, plus X, and trample, where X is the amount of life you've gained this turn. Yeah, you play a few creatures beforehand, and you're, you're sitting pretty. Shalai, Voice of Plenty. It's like a hate bear protection kind of thing. Your mocha's already some protection. This is such a card. This is like the most cuttable card to me. I don't find it particularly uh, ne necessary. But Archangel of Thune in a life gain deck? Mwah. Yes, yeah. please. It's one of those cards I fought, like, you know, I was fighting for. It's like, I am making a life gain deck. Let's see if I can get this card in under the budget. And I did. Yes, it goes together super well with one of the cards we're going to add very soon. We also cut Approach at the Second Sun. That's kind of, you got to put a little bit more effort into being approach deck. I think you need to have a bunch of ways to find it the turn after or the turn you cast it. And you kind of be able to take the heat that you're going to get from all the players. This deck can't do either of those. I think the deck could take the heat by gaining enough life. But what I think the problem really is with this card is, are we a life fiend deck or are we an approach to second sun deck? If you want to with, with approach... Fine way to go. Different route, but I was making a life gain deck. And yeah, I don't think this is a life gain card. Like Just because you can survive, your deck isn't really built to do this. I uh, yeah, I agree. It's like Just because it says gain seven life, I don't feel like this is a life gain card. Crested Sun Mare, every time you gain life, get a horsey. That's indestructible pretty... horses. So In... they survive most board wipes. That's true, yeah. He makes all other horses indestructible. Yes. Uh, Lightning Greaves, it came on out. You know, it's okay with your mocha. You like do this. It's probably better with some of the hate bears. We're going to cut it for scavenging. Ooh, best friends with Archangel of Thune. Oh, yeah. They got along really well in standard. It's going to use Gain's Life and his Graveyard Hate. We love having Graveyard Hate. Just like I mentioned Primal Command before, 
Now this deck has enough incidental graveyard hate, that graveyard deck should be easier to handle. Yeah, on the same level of Primal Command, it makes me think of Titania's Command. Yep. It's well, like those are kind of like, ooh, which one do you want? Yeah. You can choose both of them, depending on... You certainly one. could. Uh, this <laughs> next one, is it any surprise that we cut these trio of cards, Jerry's? We got Ghostly Prison, we got Windborn, Windborn Muse, and we got Sphere of Safety. They're either enchantments or enchantresses or Windborn Muse. And I've even mentioned that I like these cards more now. One, Sphere of Safety is not for this deck anymore because we cut the enchantress theme. Ghostly Prison and Windborn Muse, we're just not the kind of deck that wants the pillow for. That's not what we're trying to do. We don't want to incidentally gain life, like by not having people tackle sometimes. No, we want actual factual life gain. That's what's going to make this deck stronger. Gaining pseudo life doesn't, trigger, doesn't, doesn't trigger nothing. It doesn't trigger things like Dawn of Hope. It doesn't actually trigger Dawn of Hope so that we can pay two to draw cards. And we our life total is going to be higher and we're going to be gaining more life so we can recover from a lower life total. We don't need to stop 10 damage over the first 10 turns. Dawn of Hope was an ad if you didn't get that. It's yeah, on the get, get ready. Uh, this this one, uh, we also added uh, Dawn of Hope, obviously. Blind Obedience, this extort is sick. It's a nice way to chip away at your opponents and just make your life total huge. And then Rock's Faith Mender doubles all your life gain. If Rock's Faith Mender's out, we are going ham sandwich. And when we untap with Dromoka and just play it, opponents just go, uh-oh. Life gain decks um, absolutely pop off with Rock's Faith Mender. It's so much life gain. It just doubles it up every single time. This next cut's pretty easy. Reclamation Sage out. Guess what? We're in the color white, and we have a strict upgrade into Lauren of the Third Path, who is exactly Reclamation Sage, but has Vigilance and a terrible ability that you can use when you don't have any cards in your hand. Yeah. Oh, if, if a player's going to die, you draw a card. If you're best friends with somebody who also wants the thing you want in the game, you're drawing a card. It's like, it can it can do some stuff, but it's just it's just literally better. <laughs> Not every day you cut Rex Age. Yeah, this deck also was a little high on board wipes. It had like four, maybe five. I cut a couple of them. First one I cut was Vanquish the Horde. Um, Not that it's Part of it was because of cost, and the other part was because... Like price, dollars. Price and dollars, and I wanted to leave in Fumigate, which felt more on theme, even mm -hmm. though it is a distinctively worse card in its place. Druid of Purification. Honestly, this card sometimes feels like a board play. I'm going to add this to any deck that has any sort of budget in green, because it's so It is good. fantastic. If you have not played this card, it is like out of this world good. It's every piss, every word of it is perfect. It gets around hexproof. It, it's a silly card. It's a silly, silly card. Austere Command was the other board wipe that I got out of this deck, and it's plays Hallage Intervention, which gets the extra boost. This card's already an amazing removal spell. When you care about life gaining your deck, oh my gosh. You got, you got the Rock's Faith Mender, you cast Heliod's X12, you're gaining like 48 life. Four, is, that a, is that a good amount of life to gain? It is, and I have 14 mana. I wish I could have done something better. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. You should have built a better deck. Hey, you know, that's a lot of life. Now, we're moving into where I added lands, and some of the cuts were lands, and some of them weren't. This deck was a little all over the place with its land count, though I will give credit where credit is due. There was so many, so many MDFCs oh, in this deck. Oh, yeah. That is, big marks. Yes, yeah, big marks. So, Dark Stimitation out better for... Um, enchantment decks. Enchantment decks, yes, exactly. In its place, Gavany Township. Perfect utility land. If I'm playing green-white, especially a two-color green-white deck... Hard not to slot it in. It's such a free roll, and it's so much to get out of a land. Yeah, overwhelming stampede's going to go away. We have plenty overrun and pump effects for our, you know, mid-to-wide amount of creatures. Not super-wide, mid-to-wide. That we don't really need overwhelming stampede. We're going to play Blighted Step. That's a big, big boost of life gain. On a land, I would never, you know, I wouldn't really play... Uh, there's like a, a four mana sorcery that's like you gain two for each creature on the battlefield. Not so much of a fan of that. That's a that's a card in my deck. But it steps just there when you need it. It's a land, yeah. And you, we had enough room for a carless land, making this the freest of free rolls. We're not landfall deck. We're not going quite wide enough to care about Felder retreat. So in its place, we had a wooded bastion, another land. This mana base, I got to be real good for this $500 budget. Yeah, we're also going to take out Hall of Heliod's Generosity. How many times do we have to say we're not an Enchantress deck anymore? We're going to put Exotic Orchard in because we're a deck, so we would like to make mana. Exotic Orchard is just... Staple. Every two color deck plus in every single time, especially because it's 20 cents. It's literally the freest of free rolls. It, it should... When you're doing your deck and you go Command Tower, the next card is Exotic Orchard. Pretty much. It, it's literally... That's how I do it. I, every single time. Yeah, we got some strict upgrades here with Blossoming Sands into Temple Garden. Thankfully, our responsible budget spending lets us play a really good land instead of a pretty bad land. We and also then, have lots of ways to search up plains and forest, making Temple Garden a super 
integral part of this deck. Yeah, Nature's Lore is going to want to get this thing every time. Reliquary Tower, not needed in like 80% of the decks is in. So we're going to put War Room, and we can actually draw cards and pay the tiniest amount of life. This deck isn't going to go over on cards in hand too often. And the times it does, it's not going to need Reliquary Tower. It's just it's too few and far between. Also, get out of your Temple of the False God. We Come absolutely on. hate this card. We talk down on it all the time. It's honestly, I think it's just a bad card. In its place, Cross and Verge, I just mentioned with Temple Garden that there's things that search up plains and forests. This is one of them. Yeah, and it taps for mana. Yeah. Wow. This card is <laughs> Imagine really... Imagine that. This card is really good. Yes. Uh, forest and Plains coming out for Snow-Covered Forest. Can you guess why? And Snow-Covered Plains. I'm thinking Field of the Dead's in this deck. This deck had a Field Jack of Rocks is a responsible deck builder. The, J- Jack of Rocks built a solid mana base. It was a little low on lands, but it was pretty much there. I just had to like do the little tiny tune-ups. This was a good mana base. The heart-wrenching last cut, though. Nick those Shrine to Nick's. Couldn't quite get there on the budget, but Brushland, we'll take it. Yeah, I mean, Nykthos is good, but it's honestly this deck, it'll be good in this deck one out of the ten times you play it. Like, it's one of those cards that... It's a strict, like, it's a, a free roll of play, but we can't afford it. Exactly. It's a, it, was a, it was a budget cut. The total I was allowed to spend on this deck was $500, so I had to take this whole deck down below $500, and I took it to $49. Fifty-nine. Wow! Damn. You saved four hundred and fifty dollars. What did I say? Forty-nine, fifty-nine. What I meant. That's is, so good. I meant four hundred and ninety-nine dollars and fifty-nine cents. That's still pretty good. Damn, I'm good. Yeah. Original average mana value of the deck was three point three five, but the new average mana value after that nitpicking nerd's touch three point oh seven. You're welcome. All your spells are a third of a mana cheaper. In total changes forty-seven cuts. 34 adds, you know we had to trim those 13 at the beginning. Yes, exactly. Um, This deck is going to function very well. I think the only thing that I would say is, like, if you're looking to get this deck flowing a little more, I think Jamoka is a bit of a clunky commander. Doesn't quite fit the life gain theme, but does have a very strong ability that will let you pop off on your turns. I would suggest Lathriel, or Lathiel, yeah. whatever her name is. That card is good. I, I honestly, I was looking at Lathiel decks, and I was like, I oh might want to build this. This looks oh. this looks like a cool life game deck. If you want to look at a cool deck, we tuned up this deck here. I don't even know what it is, but you're going to see that it's great. It's probably the Mimeoplasm deck. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.